Hey there, and welcome back to another episode of Why Show or Not? The series of the first episode of an anime side based on the anime. You're watching the show or not, and today it's The Promised Neverland. So let's have a more classical breakdown of the first episode because it just makes it so easy for us. First of all, the animation. Cinematically, the shot compositions, the art style, it all looks pretty gorgeous, but the characters themselves are just a tad bit odd. I'm up for anything that's different from the standard, but the head-to-body <laughs> ratio is just, uh, yeah, let's not make animated Funko Pop figures, or uh, however they call them. Don't get me wrong, they look weird, but they don't cross over the border of looking so weird that it's bad. And weird sometimes is good, or at least interesting. I don't know if those words mean anything. But then we're greeted with a really solid opening. I'm a fan of everything that they did. The music pumped me up, the visuals look cinematic, and I'm always a fan of that. And it even kind of looks like those highly edited AMVs that you see on YouTube, with all kinds of filters put on it, but just without the constant jittery transitions. Now, I'd like to analyze the background music, but that's kind of impossible unless we also go into the story, because they're pretty intertwined. Okay, before the opening, we're greeted by our three main characters. Him, her, and him. And then we find out that they belong to an orphanage. And what stuck out to me in the beginning was this cheesy dating sim music in the background. <laughs> it has more cheese than they add to a sandwich in Subway, which doesn't really, they don't put much cheese on Subway, I'm just, but that kind of works in the show's favor because later on when the tone changes, it's just that much more impactful. When they start eating, this eerie feeling comes over us and we see that they have numbers on their necks and then they work by making barcodes? Yeah, I have no clue what's up with that. It just seems like they draw barcodes, or at least something similar. But apparently that's how they sort the kids from smartest to dumbest in the class. And of course our main three characters aced the barcode test and made the perfect codes for your groceries, I guess. They get so hyped up that one of their classmates challenges Norman, which is the white-haired kid, to a duel of tag. That's how we solved all our problems when we were young. But only 90s kids will understand, of course, because back then we didn't have TikTok replies. Come on, what? I was born in the wrong generation. All throughout the show, we have this ominous feeling that something wrong or something eerie is lurking behind the corner. Because in the beginning, we have this giant gate that they're told never to go past. And now in the forest, they find this knee-high fence that they're told to not go over. But honestly, what's the point of that fence? It looks so small that it, in fact, is inviting them to go over it. It's taunting them with its smallness. But they're good brainwashed kids and won't do that. Instead, they start talking about their futures, and we discover as viewers that after a child turns 12, she's adopted or taken out to the orphanage. And what's odd is that none of the children who leave never write back, even if they promise to. Which can we be any more clear that something's wrong here? <laughs> well, we in fact can. Near the end of the episode, one of the kids even gets adopted. It's this girl here, and she's one of the youngest and stupidest of the bunch. No way that something bad could ever happen to her, right? <laughs> It's the song of death, little one. And I'm giving this show a watch. I don't want to enter the spoiler territory here and spoil you the ending because there is pretty big build up to it and I wouldn't want to just take away that feeling of finding out what happened at the end. Of course, most of us can probably guess already what was going to happen, but it doesn't happen in the way that you think it happens. The little kid forgets her bunny back home, and the other two decide to take the bunny to her, but to do that they have to pass the gate, and then they discover what actually was so ominous about this show. A nice animation style, cool characters, interesting premise, and it just promises to be all kinds of amazing based on how the first episode ended. The ending music video was pretty lackluster though, it was just pictures scrolling. I guess they ran out of budget by trying to simulate actual vocal depth in most of the shots. Which, oh that's freaking, oh who doesn't like some good blur in their videos. But that's all from me, I'm really looking forward to what this show has in store for us. Next week it's going to be da da da. Don't forget to promise me a like, subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you next week. Bye.